All right, so a couple of the applications. First thing I want to talk about is how do you show that you actually have a tautology? So when we have a rule of inference, for example, you affirm the hypothesis, therefore the conclusion must follow. This is a compound proposition. This is just P implies Q, and you have P, and all of this is supposed to imply Q. And what I would like to know is is this actually a tautology? And this is what we have to show. And to do a any sort of showing something is a tautology, there's three ways to do this. So A1, the first way to do it was obviously just use a truth table. And it's pretty straightforward. You'll just have four rows and you go across. This is kind of long looking. Other ones look longer. You form a truth table, you get a tautology, done. Um, another way you can do it, we could use the logical equivalencies. So for example, taking this, what we show that we have, okay, I have P implies Q and I have P all that is supposed to imply Q. Well, I don't like this imply, so I'm going to replace this, this imply with the disjunctive, so that would be, this would be, it is not the case that we have P implies Q, and I have P, or I have Q. And we look at that and say, all right, fine. I don't like this imply. <laughs> so, but before I do that, I'm going to take this negation through. And so that's like a, I could use De Morgan's law. And so this is not the case that I have P implies Q. And that and becomes an or. I do not have P. I still have my or Q. But if I look at this, I notice that I have a thing or a thing or a thing. So I can use the associative law and reassociate and say that this is logically not the case that I have P implies Q or I have not P or Q. Well, not P or Q is just P implies Q, so this is logically I don't have P implies Q, or I have P implies Q. But to not have something or have it is just simply the negation rule, so that's a tautology. So that's an example. And the third thing that you could do is use the whole discussion example do a verbal argument, which is really, again, if I can spell, <laughs> which is really just simply talking through the truth table, right? You just, when is this true and when is this false? And you just put it into words. So any of these three will work to actually do that. Now, how, now that you have things that are all tautologies, how would you go through and actually work them out? Well, the way you work them out is you would go through it and say, uh, let's say we have a particular problem and have an example here. Let's see, do we have an island one? No, I'll well just do the one I did in class. Let's say that the premises given are uh, all, all insects have six legs, and another premise that is given is that dragonflies are insects and another one that's given is spiders do not have have six legs and another one is spiders eat dragonflies okay so for this, you know, we could go through these and each of these premises, well, first off, we could use logical equivalencies to kind of restate each of these. So all insects have six legs is to simply say that if it is an insect, 
logically this is if insect, then six legs, right? So I might as well say get rid of the if. It's essentially insect implies six legs. And, um, but this is a universal, there's a for all animals, if it is an insect, then it has six legs, and then dragonflies are insects. So you would be like, if a dragonfly is an insect, then dragonflies have six legs would be universal instantiation. So I could take this particular thing and say, okay, by universal instantiation, it says if a dragonfly is an insect, then a dragonfly has six legs. So this would be a valid conclusion, right? So I found a valid conclusion. By universal instantiation, you if you tell me all insects have six legs, that really says if it's an insect, then it has six legs. I can pick a particular instance. If a dragonfly is an insect, then the dragonfly will have six legs. And so that is, I'll call that conclusion one. But on the other hand, I could use might as well go through here and say that's premise one and premise two and premise three and premise four. Let's give them little dumb names. Okay, but on the other hand, if I look at premise two, if a dragonfly is an insect, then a dragonfly has six legs. Well, C1, okay, dragonfly is insect implies dragonfly six legs that's c1 but premise two is dragonfly is insect well from that I could say well, wait a second what am I supposed to do I'm supposed to affirm the hypothesis hey I have affirmed the hypothesis I can jump to another valid conclusion so hence I have a new conclusion I'll call it c2 Another conclusion is, flip the two, dragonflies have six legs. Hey look, there's another conclusion that I have. And so we could go through this entire process of taking the premises that we have, maybe restating them into a new way that's more useful and then combining the premises using the rules of inference to get to valid conclusions and valid conclusions themselves can fall back in as a premise to make more valid conclusions and so going through problems of this nature where you're you're taking things apart and you're putting it back together and not necessarily having it be closed end like do this and you get this where it's more open-ended, where you have premises, what conclusions can you draw, can you go on a little bit past that, is a really good thinking process, right? You don't necessarily do these things in the real world, but these are games or toys or problem sets that refine and sharpen how we think and how we tear things apart and put them together using tautologies, using things that are actually true in catching ourselves to learn that, oh, wait a second, that's not a tautology. I have to pull back and ask, that's a conditional. So when is this going to be true and false? How do I work it out? So for your attendance problem, what I would like you to do is to continue this process and get some more conclusions from this uh, for handing in next time.